Hey, everybody. My name is Brian Eufinger, and I am half of Edison Prep. My wife is the other half. And we built this video in March of 2021 as the first districts in Georgia started debuting the digital ACT for the school day ACT purposes. Uh, so we put this together uh, at client request. And so feel free to share this link um, to the extent there are updates. EdisonPrep.com slash CBT for computer-based testing will be updated uh, as appropriate. So even if you're uh, friend is not prepping with us, they, they should still watch this. No one should walk into the digital test having done nothing or not knowing the format or just the um, interface and the syntax and all that stuff. So all of you, by virtue of being registered for the ACT, have a My ACT account. This should be a familiar look right here. So when you log in to do the digital practice, it's a full real test. Um, everyone who's looking at this should take ideally the full test straight through like a real test. Um, if you need to break the sections up, you can, but it'd be a great stamina builder to just get used to taking a three-hour test straight through on the computer. So you click on tests and prep, and then you go down to the big tic-tac-toe box at the bottom right here, and it says ACT free online tests. So you click that, and it's going to open up a different tab for you. And so this is what it looks like. It's actually test 1874 CPRE, which is a test from three or four years ago. It's a good, real new, uh, recent test. Um, so let's dive right in. Now, some of the advice I give you is going to be applicable to all four sections. Other pieces apply to certain sections, but not others as far as strategy goes. Um, so I'll make that distinction where appropriate. Now, the other thing is any practice you do for the digital ACT, because there's so few tests like here, there's this one, there's another one on a page for international students. There's, there's a couple out there, um, but you don't want to use them on untimed tests. You'll see once you hit the button to start taking a section, it's going to give you an option of timed or untimed. Obviously, you want to do a time to make sure that you have that same look and feel. And before you start, you want to make sure you have scratch paper for the math section. Uh, more on that later. But as far as getting ready to take it, having, having your computer charged, having your computer plugged in, calculator, pencils, as well as uh, some scratch paper. That's the main difference. Um, you also uh, want to use the same computer that you'll be using on the real test day. So if you have a school-issued device with a smaller screen and different keyboard and mouse situation. Don't use a big gaming computer you might have at home with a bigger monitor and different setup because you want to mimic the real feel of what you're going to have on test day. Otherwise, uh, there could be some oopses along the way. So the other thing is all of you hopefully have taken some practice tests as, as far as just practicing by yourself, getting familiar with the test. If you haven't, do so beforehand because the worst part would be if you wasted time reading the instructions because once the section starts, it People who actually sit there and read the instructions because they haven't ever read the directions, that eats into their time. And that's just losing points right there. So make sure that you know that the timer doesn't start when you hit question number one. It just starts when you start. So be efficient and go straight on to test one since it's not going to be your first or question one because it's not going to be your first rodeo. So let's dive right in. So here is the English section. So you'll notice it just has the instructions, like I mentioned. Um, there is going to be a clock. I'll move this whole thing here. So there's a clock right here that is a countdown timer. Um, so that's one nice thing. So if you don't want to see the time, you can click that. I'd recommend keeping it because not only is it better than the watch that a lot of you guys have that you have to read a 1 through 12 type watch, it counts downwards, which is kind of nice. So do leave it on. You can turn it off if you want to. So here is what it looks like. The instructions are right here. Now look at the sidebar. The left-hand side you have item one, two, three, four, and it goes through the 75 questions that you're used to. On the English section, there's always one person we hear about who panicked where they accidentally clicked this thing at the bottom. See where it says hide review? And they're like, where'd it go? And they want to navigate around questions and it's not there. So if you ever lose it, bottom left corner, hide review, show review. So that's the first thing I want to mention. So let's just dive in. So when you click item one, see how it turned from an open circle where my mouse is to an eyeball? That means that you you viewed it. So if you have viewed it and then you go to question number six, you've also viewed six. Number one, you viewed it. Number six, you viewed it. It just tells you you viewed it. Now, if you have not seen anything, it is the open bubble. If you have answered it, just for the sake of argument, let's go ahead and pick the answer C to this question, not the answer. So you pick C and you click next. Notice how it turned into a radio button that's filled in. That tells you that item one has been answered. So if you're trying to look through questions you've answered, not answered, which ones have I seen and not seen yet, filled in, I'm done. Open, haven't looked at yet, and looked at is the eyeball. Now one 
there are pros and cons to the digital test. I'll point them out where appropriate. Uh, it is nice that they, whatever they're asking about on the English section, they highlight it in yellow right here, which is kind of nice. Um, so that tells you where to look, etc. Now, let's talk about some overall tools. Now, there is the highlighter, which is the most useful in the reading section, less useful in the other sections, but you can use it anywhere. So it just lets you highlight. You can highlight as much as you want, etc. And if you want to clear it, you just click clear highlights, just like that. Now the contrast is kind of weird, it's kind of trippy, um, but you can, if you wanted to do black and magenta, I don't think that would help your score, but uh, however you want to do it is okay. Um, but yeah, that is down there. It's not really something that most people will use, uh, whereas the highlighter, especially on the reading and other sections, will be. And I, like I mentioned, you can clear it. Now tools. Most of the tools, I'm going to kind of make fun of them real quickly here, just so we don't have to cover on all four of the sections. I don't know why they have them because they're not useful. And unless you hate your score, you probably shouldn't use them. So answer masking, that just hides the answers from you. That just slows you down and just doesn't make any sense. So answer masking, how about not? And then line reader, it gives you this torture device where you're trying to figure out what to do with it. And just, it's, it's, it's going to waste time. It's like, where do I move this thing? What are these little, it's like cropping a photo on your iPhone. And it's really confusing. Please don't use it at all. And then you look at magnifying glass, which if you hit magnifying glass, it pops it up here in this corner. And if you wanted to, you can do this. And that's kind of interesting. Now, here's a big distinction that you need to play with on the specific device you're going to use on test day. Most of us know that if you take your mouse, it has a scroll wheel, and you hold the control button, that you can do this. And you can scroll up and scroll down, and it makes the size get bigger. That is actually nice. Like if there's way smaller font than you like or, or vice versa, that is far superior if it's doable on your computer, depends on your setup, than the magnifying glass. But if you want to use magnifying glass, I guess you could. I think it would slow most people down. Whereas I love the idea of zooming in to make it easier. Now, the next piece is masking. Masking is just if you want a little post-it to hide stuff from yourself. Again, all these tools, no clue why they're here because I would not recommend using any of them. They're just there to really do nothing. So that is interesting, probably not what you thought it would be a couple minutes into the video, um, but that is how it works. Um, so we covered the contrast, how to highlights, radio buttons, all that. Let's talk about, we'll talk about flagged questions in the next section. So that's pretty much it for the English chapter. So you can click exit. Obviously you shouldn't, because you should take the entire test straight through, timed, like it's real, answering the questions. But actually, let me show you a couple other things. So here's what you can do. Say that we have question three. It's important to know how do you answer the question? So if you click adorned here for question number three, bottom right corner, you click next. You answered it. So by clicking next, it's there. So it's been answered. And if you want to go back and change C to something else, to A, you can. And once you click next, it locks in answer A. Now, one important distinction that people don't think about until test day Let's just randomly go to question eight. So we're on question eight over here. Say that you hit D and you're not sure, but you'd like to sort of leave it just as D stored. Now let's go to item 10. Um, now I clicked eight and then I put D. Did I click next or did I go to question 10? So because I clicked that, it's there. Now if you want to go back and change it, then you would need to go change it. So just by clicking it, there's different ways to answer the question. You can either click it, hit next, but if you click it and then go to a different question, it's as if you did just that. So be careful. It's not the answer you're willing to live with forever. Then that is how the software works. Now, uh, another thing to keep in mind, I'll cover that in the, in the math section. So you are going to go ahead and click quit the test for me, because we're not going to go through all these questions. Uh, so we could click quit. One cool thing is once you do it, it grades it. Obviously, we're going to get a really, really bad score since we just did a couple questions and didn't even pay attention to the answers. But see how it says scoring in progress? It'll just score it for you and probably give it like a one or a two. There you go, a one. Now you hit math. When you hit math, obviously, like I said, timed. You do timed. And then this is the one section, again, the timer starts right away. So you want to not do the instructions. You go straight to the questions. And it's very similar to everything else. It's just a matter of the answers are here when you click next or to a new question it locks in your answer choice. But there are some differences. Uh, so I just talked smack about a lot of the tools. There's a difference. 
If you click tools here at the bottom, answer eliminator. Many people uh, like it, some people won't use it. Depends also how you're using your scratch paper, whether you use this at all or some or none. Um, so answer eliminator. If you click answer eliminator and turn it on, it lets you, if you have certain, if you want to cross off answers and do process of elimination in a visual manner, then it will let you do that. So that's the answer eliminator is. Now, the other stuff that you're familiar with from last time, don't use answer masking. Don't use line reader. Don't use magnifying glass. Don't use masking. It's all useless. Now, some people, hopefully, uh, you are not using this calculator, but if you have a terrible oops on test day and forget your calculator, don't do that. Um, then you could, in theory, use this if needed. But otherwise, please use your trusty calculator that you're familiar with from school. Now, here is where the next piece happens. So we have, see where it says item one, item two, item three, all this. Say that on item three, you're just not sure. And you want to put C, but you want to flag it. Now, that's when most people start practicing on test day and they haven't used the software, I see people do this physically. And that's not what that's meant to do. Look at the bottom left-hand corner. See where it says flag for review? I flagged it. So now, instead of an eyeball, or I finished it, or I haven't looked at it, it puts a flag. Especially on maths, where you're going to bounce around, it's really hard to finish, etc. Putting that flag there is nice, because say time is running out. It's the five-minute warning. You've answered most of the questions. Watch my cursor. All is all. Open is ones I haven't looked at, and then flagged is ones I flagged. So once you have the flag, it could just be easy to click through and go back to some ones that you were unsure, uncertain of, or... That kind of thing. So on, on all the sections except for English, pretty much, um, flagging is a pretty useful tool, just like the same way you would on a paper test, putting hyphens or circling the question number to come back to. So that's big. Also, on your scratch paper, since you'll have scratch paper, you want to make sure big on the left-hand side to write the question number on it, because say you've drawn some pretty diagrams for question number 40 or something. You want to be able to know, well, what the heck is this diagram coming uh, referring to? So you can flip back to the question uh, number 40 and not waste precious time. So that is one feature. Now some other stuff um, that is, you know, while some people uh, will say there's zero, zero advantages or pros and cons to the digital test, um, it's just different. Uh, and so you want to be familiar with it. So one of the, there are a lot of challenges, but one of the nice things is some people that are guilty of being overachievers and worriers and overwriting too much on the paper test, Sometimes the annoyingness of having to redraw a diagram makes people do it more. The, some of the stuff we talk about in class, you know, process of elimination and picking numbers and some of the other strategies. So write as little or as much on your scratch paper as need to, but that is one interesting note that we've had some people comment about. They didn't realize how inefficient they sometimes might have been writing stuff on too many steps on their paper. Now, um, I mentioned already you can use the control button to scroll in and out. That is nice. Now, one thing I want to talk about, the one area of this test that bugs me, I'm going to move the video right here, is, so right here, we, it, it expands to the whole screen. So if you click, if you move this over here, then it does different things. So notice how it does word wrap. So if you want to have it be tighter, so it's more of a square box of text rather than long and thin, that actually does save time. It's just sort of a nice creature comfort. Um, and so that is worth looking into. Um, seeing whether your particular computer machine that you're going to be using, uh, if you have a really small monitor screen, it may just be a perfect fit as it is without any need to do so. Um, I have a decently large monitor that I'm recording this on. Um, now, I know when I'm recording this in March 21, many people in Fulton County um, just got a new replacement device literally within the last week. So any updates you have, like software updates or other junk that you need to do, please do that well in advance uh, of the test day. And when you do the practice, make sure you do it, like I said, on the device you'll be using um, on test day. Now, the other stuff, uh, we covered answer eliminator and all that jazz. Now, let me show you the differences. So no need to mention anything else on this for math. It's very similar to the stuff we talked about on English. Let's go to the next piece. So on reading, reading and science are always the two that have more timing issues uh, for the biggest majority of people. So it's going to look similar, but one thing to know is this. You should, like always, read the whole passage. But as you answer each question, look at this. So here's question one. 
and I'm answering A. And here's question two. I'm gonna answer C, but watch me scroll down to the very bottom. Once I answer C, it pops it back to the top. So every time you answer a question, it's gonna pop you back to the top of the passage. So if you have, you know, there's one paragraph you were banking on, just know that it's always gonna pop back up to the top. Now, let's look at highlighting, because this is obviously the section where the most people may use the highlighter function so you can do stuff. So here's question three. We bubble it in. And I answered question three. Here's what they did not do. This was not always the case, so I'm glad they fixed it. It keeps your highlights permanently. So even though you answer question three, you don't lose it. So don't worry, you're not losing all your awesome highlights. So if you do a great job with a little bit of annotation or highlighting the first time, then you get to keep it throughout the whole thing. And just like math, if you need to flag a question for review, then you can do so the same, exact same way. So that's pretty much it. It's the exact same length as a, all, all they do for this test, because we get this question from students all the time, they, there is no such thing as a built for digital test. This exact test, 1874 CPRE, that's the sample one right here, is the same one that some guidance counselor's office give out that little pat, that pre-printed packet that is in some uh, high school counseling offices. So it's all the same exact stuff, same exact scale, same exact everything as you're used to. Now I'm gonna exit the reading here. And then science, there's a couple things to be aware of. Um, so on the science section, timed, all the stuff like from before, let's mention what's different. So you hit one, all the stuff you're used to, all the tools that you should not use, except for maybe answer eliminator, not the rest. Um, flag for review, still available, awesome to have. Um, now here's the highlighter. Now this is the thing depending on what type of graph it is, because people will annotate stuff on their um, science. You look at this table, you can highlight stuff. You look at this, it's a PNG file or whatever. So it's not certain pieces, certain elements of the, of the science section are not necessarily highlightable, um, like where you're plotting a point, in which case you might need to take your index finger and physically place it onto that one spot on the graph to see, oh, it's 160 for that point or whatever it is. So that, that is one meaningful difference. And same caveat from before, as far as zooming and seeing if your computer uh, can do that to change the overall size of it. And that's really the only difference is the, the PNG JPEG possibility right here. That's it. Now, here is one very important thing. Again, we're recording this in late March of 2021. Luckily for you guys, you are taking it in late March of 2021, if you're listening to this now, and then your scores come back in around 10 days, which is about 10 days before the April exam. So many, many people, and if not, you should, take the digital test and then take the April test and pow, pow, super score it, and if they play their cards right, could possibly be done, which would be a great thing uh, to have. So if you are within reasonable distance of your jumping distance of your goals, plus their super scoring, um, do not not register for the April test, because by the time the scores from this digital test come out, the registration deadline will be long gone. So as we always tell people, if the worst 40 bucks you accidentally spent in high school is you accidentally get a 36 on this digital ACT, your mom will not be mad. So it's definitely, definitely uh, worth doing. So do not skip. Now, we're gonna exit this. Um, that's basically it. Um, if you are curious, if you have questions, um, please reach out to us. Uh, on the very video, on the same page that, that you're seeing this video recorded, uh, our contact info is there. Um, answer, happy to answer any questions that you have. Uh, we do offer free mock tests. Um, that's posted on our website all the way through next July already. Um, and we're always happy to answer questions, happy to help people prep, happy to help, happy to help people who have questions about self prep. Um, but definitely glad you watched this video. If you've gotten this far, then you are awesome. The number one thing that I'm gonna close with, save the best for last, the number one thing you should do if everyone, if your mom tries to make you do 100 tests before the digital test, which is not that many days away, obviously you can't. If I could get everyone in Fulton to do one thing, and that is simply, I'm going to wake up, eat breakfast, knock out the whole three-hour digital test to simulate the real feel of what I'm getting on Tuesday, and then may, that, that would be great. If you want to really be an overachiever, that and then followed by viewing the results here on the right-hand side and reviewing all the wrong answers, then you'd be the best. So that's can't ask for that much more. Um, but the key is familiarity. You want to walk in and know what this software is going to look like. And I want to wish you the best of luck. And again, if you have any questions, reach out brian at edisonprep.com or 
404-333-8573. Good luck on the test.